Diane in Denmark here. I've got something a wee bit different today. Uh, I'm making some chocolate uh, pistachio and cranberry fudge. And it's based on a recipe uh, from Nigella Lawson. Uh, I love her books. I, I don't really use them for cooking anymore, but I just use them for inspiration and it's really cozy to read them. Uh, but this is a fudge that the kids and I have made quite a few years running and you know, you can uh, cut it up when it's finished and put it in little, um, let me just get in here, uh, little, you know, little cellophane bags um, and put a wee bow around it. It makes a great Christmas gift. And it's a really simple recipe. You know, I love my simple, simple and easy things, but it tastes fantastic. And I thought I'd just show you how to make the fudge. Um, I wasn't planning to make this until December. But I actually had a can of condensed milk that I need to use up, so I thought, well, you know what? Let's start early and we'll have a little run through of this recipe and then uh, the kids and I and my friends can enjoy it. So I'll, I'll tell you what I've done so far um, and I'll put the recipe in a pinned comment for this video and in the video information. But main thing is I've already washed my hands, that's already done and I've got my penny on and you'll need to excuse the kind of um, bit of a mess here on the worktop. It's not really, it's not a mess. Um, I'm going out to my Swedish evening class this evening and that means that I've prepped dinner for um, hubby and, and the kids uh, and in my instant pot I've got vegetarian chilli and in my rice cooker I've obviously got rice and they're both on the timers. So uh, anyway, so if you're wondering what the mess is around here, I'm just trying to get a bit ahead. Anyway, uh, I'll tell you what I'm doing with the, with the recipe. It's really simple. I'll just give a stir here. Uh, all we're using is dark chocolate. Now I've already chopped mine up and I've put it over just so we wouldn't be here all day uh, melting chocolate. But look, that's one of the bits of chocolate that's left over. Uh, if you get 70% chocolate, you know, the really strong stuff, that's great. Uh, and as I say, I've just put some into melt. And this is the rest of the stuff that I chopped up. So let me get that in. Smell mm. melted chocolate. <laughs> right. And all I'm doing is I'm melting it on a really, really low heat. And also in there is... Uh, sorry, the chocolate, there's 350 grams. I'll see if I can work that out in ounces for you. And then 30 grams of butter. I just use this spreadable butter from Kaergorn, which is a Danish one. It's got a wee bit of salt in it. The recipe said salt, and I don't put salt in the recipe because our butter has salt in it. And a tin of condensed milk. Now, I wanted to just show you this before I add it. So we're all on the same page, you know, it's not carnation milk. Uh, you know, when I was small, when I was a baby, my mum used to give me carnation milk um, diluted with water. That was kind of baby milk <laughs> when I was a baby 50 years ago. Uh, I just want to show you this. Here's the size of the can compared to my hand. It's 397 grams. There we go. And it's the yellow the very thick, yummy yellow stuff. So we're just gonna add that to the chocolate. And I've, th this is on my electric hob, and I've got it down at three or four, and I'm just actually going down to two out of uh, nine. So it's a really, really slow heat. Let me get all of that out. There we go, I think that's it. You know what, I'm going to be taking a spoon afterwards and scraping every last bit of this out because I love condensed milk. I know it's just really pure sugar, but there we go. You only live once. Right, so basically, this, and just give it a look, this is your fudge. And you don't need to do anything special. All you're going to do is wait for it to uh, melt the chocolate, 
and the condensed milk and the butter. And it's actually almost ready now. But, but don't go and try too fast uh, with these kind of things because if you burn the chocolate, the recipe is ruined. So you do not want to kind of go off and start doing other things. You know, set your timer and make sure that you stay in the kitchen while you're making this. Right, okay, I'm just going to switch that off. There we are, you can see it. And it's not the kind of fudge, uh, you know, that you need to go boiling and checking temperature. It's going to go in the fridge once it's finished and that will keep it kind of chilled and hard. Now, you could just uh, put that into your dish. Uh, I'm, I'm going to put mine into my dish in a wee minute. But in the Nigella recipe, um, she puts in pistachios, which is what we normally do. And I thought this time I'd add in some um, cranberries or tana bear, as they're called in Danish. So I'm just going to take a handful of the cranberries. And this way I can also see by making it now and that we can taste test it. If we, if we like it with the cranberries added, then we just always make it with cranberries. And if you don't like cranberries or pistachios, you know, feel free to add anything else. You could put in some of those fantastic raisins that we made the other day. I don't know if you saw the video of me making um, my British fruit uh, classic Christmas cake, I showed you that I take the raisins and put them in that really good sherry. You could take out some of those raisins and put that into your fudge. That would taste fantastic. Maybe I should try some of that. Hmm. I might do it in half of the mix. Anyway, right, I've chopped up some cranberries. Just let me chop. I'll pop those in. And then onto the pistachios. Let me just check what she said about the amount of pistachios. But remember, you can just, you know, you're a grown up, you can do what you want. You know, you don't need to stick perfectly to the recipe. Okay, she says 150 grams of pistachios. I'm gonna say that's about that much. Hold on, if I, if I move you along this way. There we are. Can you see a bit better? Yeah, okay. Right, I'll just quickly shell these. And once they're shelled, I'm just going to chop them up as well so that we've kind of got big bits and small bits in the fudge. And uh, listen, if you don't want to make the, the fudge, uh, why don't you use the time watching this video to fold some laundry? Or if you're at work taking a break, what about um, going through your desk drawer? Are there some, uh, do you need to fill up your stapler with staples? Sharpen those pencils? Get some more carbon copy paper or hold on, <laughs> we're past the days of carbon copy paper. In my very first job, when I was, when I left college, when I was what, 19, 20, uh, I was working uh, for a woolen merchant as the secretary to the uh, managing director. And in those days, my typewriter was electric, but it wasn't even electronic. And I remember the day that I actually got an electronic typewriter at work. So I'm giving my age away there. You can see that's like over 30 years ago. And then when I went to work at the Court of Justice of the EU, you know, the European Court in Luxembourg, that was the first time that I worked on a computer. Well, I had used a computer a bit, but I wasn't, um, you know, I didn't have a, a computer to work from every day. But when I went to Luxembourg, that was the first time that I had a computer. And there was no internet back then. So any hands up if you remember those times. And we used to, when we were, when we'd be, when I was typing letters in my first job, you know, it was, uh, you know, type the thing and then there was the three copies and there was the, 
you know, use the carbon paper and there was a green copy for accounts and a pink copy for the files and oh, oh my goodness. And if you made a mistake, you had to get your tipex out. And, anyway, enough of the chat. I'm almost done with the shelling pistachio. Maybe I should have stopped the video, but anyway, it's good to have a wee chat from time to time. I know the kids always think it's fantastic that there was no internet. When I was actually a grown woman, there was no internet. And about us sharing the telephone. <laughs> uh, well, we had our own telephone in our house, but my friend, my best friend who lived in the, the next street, uh, they had a phone that they shared the line with the people next door. So when you phoned her, it's like you had to check that you were talking to the right family. <laughs> ah, those were the days. Life was so much simpler then. Right, I've got a few pistachios that won't open, but I learned this little trick a couple of years ago. If you actually take half a pistachio shell and then kind of shove it in just if there's a tiny bit of hole and then, whee, there we go. You know, do you have that? If the kids say to you, Mom, I can't get the pistachio open. It's a really good trick uh, to teach them. Here's another one. Because you don't want to go using you know sharp knives when you're opening pistachios there we go okay one more and this doesn't even have any right not bad okay so i've got my pistachios here i'm gonna as i said just give them a wee I'm gonna cut them i'm not doing this finely remember it doesn't have to be perfect and you know what, if you're standing there thinking, you know, I'm not doing this the right way, then you go off and do things your way, but make sure you get it done. Don't leave these projects half finished. Or think, you know, I really want to make the whatever it is, fudge or cake, but you never get around to it. Don't, don't let that perfectionism get in your way. Right, I'm gonna add this to my fudge mixture. And I'll tell you what, let, let me give you a wee look at it. Oh, I love looking at it at the moment. Isn't it beautiful? That, the green and the red. Right, just gonna mix it together. Quick mix. There we are. And then I'm gonna put it into a tin which will go into the fridge so it can chill. Um, now, the, res the original recipe from Nigella says, if I can find it, here we are, uh, a tin which is, boom, 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 um, where is it? Oh yeah, uh, 23 centimetres square. Now I'm using one from that I standardised from Ikea. It's not, it's a wee bit more than 23 centimetres long, but not that breadth. It doesn't matter, and I, I, I know it's going to fit in here, and you, you can decide yourself if you want, you know, thick fudge or thin fudge. And then some, just going to put in some baking paper for this, gives it stick. And then afterwards, I can lift this out and cut the fudge. Uh, but it freezes really well and you can freeze it for a couple of months and you can eat it straight from the freezer so you don't need to worry about you know taking it out first you can just eat it straight from the, from the freezer right okay i'm going to try and get this out without making too much of a, a dog's breakfast uh, let me just get my spatula yeah, And it may look a bit weird right now, but it will uh, chill nicely. And what I shall do is, I shall put this in my freezer so that I can come back, you know, in about an hour's time and I can show you it when it is finished. And then I get to taste it. Woo -hoo! Right, here we are. And you can see it's really easy uh, to make this. I mean, if you've got small kids, you'll need to watch when you've got the hot pan 
Um, but basically, you know, they can add in the chopped nuts and fruit and give it a stir and help to get it into the, into the tin. Okay, let me get that out of the way. Right, and then you're just going to flatten it out. And it looks very uh, shiny. So that was only condensed milk, hold on, that way, Boop. condensed milk, uh, some really good dark chocolate, about 30 grams uh, of butter, and Nigella said to put a pinch of salt, but I'm, I'm using salted pistachios, and as I said, we, we've got a bit of salt in our butter, so I, I really don't think it needs any more. There we are. Okay, I've kind of smoothed it out. It's not perfect. That's going to go in the freezer. And while it's in the freezer, I'm going to do a poopa. And what is a poopa? Don't be scared. Poopa is pick up and put away. So I'm going to put away, um, you know, the clothes, the pistachio nuts, uh, get those put away, and the cranberries, the tan of air. I'm going to put away the rest of the cooking chocolate. I'm going to um, scrape out the end of this and eat it myself and also the pan. It uh, cooks, um, really a cooks treat, you know, to, to do that. And uh, I'll put my stuff away and then I shall show you when I've got my decks clear, when this is um, set, what it looks like when it's in chunks. Right, okay, see you very soon. Okay, so I'm back with the finished article. I've had this in the freezer for about 45 minutes. I'm just about to put on the kettle so I can have a cup of coffee and a wee bit of this because I'm going to be out uh, for the rest of the day. But anyway, let me just show you what it looks like. Put it down like that. There we go. Okay, so here we are. It's in the little tin. Can you hear it's quite heavy and it has set. Boom. Yummy, yummy. Okay, and all I'm going to do is, uh, I've got a nice uh, sharp knife. And let me just take a bit on the end here. And as I said, uh, you can make this as thick or as thin the fudge as you like. But let's have a wee look inside. There we go. There's a wee slice inside. Mm -hmm. I can't see the cranberries, but probably because it's a mix of the... Oh, there goes the doorbell. Hold on. Just hold on, I'll come back. Okay, and I'm back. No emergencies. Right, here we are. I've cut up a few bits. And don't they look good? Mm -mm -mm. Right, okay, I'm just going to try a bit. Mmm. really do need smelly vision and tasty vision. If you can imagine, it's a really, really intense, uh, kind of grown up Nutella flavor with the, mm, got a wee bit of cranberry there, uh, cranberry and pistachio. So anyway, have a bash at it, it's really easy. You can see they look really pretty. And once you've got them cut up, um, you know, you can just cut them as you require them. It, it's actually really good just to keep them in the freezer because you can eat it. You don't need to um, thaw them or anything because they're, they're quite mushy. Uh, and if you're going to give them as presents, I would probably keep them in the fridge until you're ready to give them. But as I said, what we normally do is we've got these little uh, cellophane bags and we put in maybe about 10 or 15 pieces of fudge, a wee bit of ribbon round it. Bob's your uncle, you've got a great gift, a clutter-free gift, and it's really, really simple to make. So, hey, that's it for me. I'm going to get on with my cup of coffee and have another couple of slices of fudge, and I shall see you very soon. So, Diane in Denmark, live long and prosper, have a fantastic day, um, and let's just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Right, that's it. See you soon.